anorexia nervosa is a serious mental illness. It's associated with one of the highest mortality risks of any psychiatric disorder. I'm Dr. Cameron Eddy, and I'm a clinical psychologist. I'm the co-director of the Eating Disorders Clinical and Research Program at Massachusetts General Hospital and an associate professor of psychology in the Department of Psychiatry at Harvard Medical School. And this is Understanding Anorexia Nervosa. Anorexia nervosa is a psychiatric disorder that's defined by both physical and mental characteristics. The Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders defines anorexia nervosa by three criteria. The first is a restriction of energy intake that leads to low body weight. The definition of low weight in anorexia nervosa is intentionally vaguely defined, so it allows for clinical judgment. In adults, it's generally a body mass index of less than 18.5, and in kids and adolescents, it's generally less than the fifth percentile um, for their own growth trajectory. The second key criterion for anorexia nervosa is expression of fear of gaining weight, persistent restrictive eating, engagement in excessive exercising or fasting, or engaging in any kind of purging behaviors. The third criterion is a disturbance in body image, which could show up in a couple of different ways. The first would be seeing oneself as fat, even though one is underweight. The second would be um, having undue influence of weight and shape in terms of one's self-worth. And then the third would be really not recognizing how significant or important it is um, to be at this low weight and how dangerous it could be. There's no single factor that causes anorexia nervosa. We think of anorexia nervosa as a biopsychosocial illness. There are large-scale genetic studies that show that there are genes at play in anorexia nervosa. In terms of the psychological factors, perfectionism, low self-esteem, anxiety, body dissatisfaction, overemphasis on a thin body ideal can all increase risk for eating disorders. And from a social standpoint, we're thinking about engagement in behaviors or activities that place a heavy emphasis on the importance of being thin. Other social factors can include things like exposure to social media, spending a lot of time online, or involvement in groups or other activities um, where being thin is highly valued. Anorexia nervosa has important consequences on the brain that are evident in terms of brain structure as well as brain function. And we know this based on neuroimaging and neurocognitive studies. We see global shrinking of the brain, both the gray matter and the white matter. This can be reflected in symptoms like fatigue, difficulty concentrating or brain fogginess. Anorexia nervosa is a serious mental illness. It's associated with one of the highest mortality risks of any psychiatric disorder. Our research team at Mass General Hospital recently published a meta-analysis where we looked at mortality risk, finding that individuals with anorexia nervosa are five times more likely to die than age-matched controls without anorexia nervosa and in fact, they're 18 times more likely to die by suicide. Other psychiatric disorders commonly co-occur with anorexia nervosa include anxiety disorders, obsessive compulsive disorder, and mood disorders like major depression, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, or ADHD, as well as substance use disorders often occur as well. So one thing that people wonder a lot is whether people with anorexia nervosa just simply don't eat at all. And actually, that's not true. People with anorexia nervosa can have either restricting type or binge eating purging type. For the folks with restricting type, they are predominantly restricting their intake. So that means that they might eat very small amounts throughout the day, or they might go for long periods of time without eating or fasting. People with the binge purge type may go from periods of restrictive eating to also engaging in binge eating, where they're eating large amounts of food and feeling really out of control with it, and then also engaging in purging behaviors. Another common question is whether everyone with anorexia nervosa is low weight. In fact, by definition, everyone with anorexia nervosa is low weight, but important to mention is that people can struggle with symptoms of anorexia nervosa and not be at a low weight. These people will have a diagnosis called atypical anorexia nervosa. Not being at a low weight, it may go unrecognized, um, but many of the symptoms and characteristics, the medical and mental health consequences are just as severe. 
The myth that anorexia nervosa affects only white, affluent females is false. Eating disorders don't discriminate. This means that anorexia nervosa cuts across sex and gender, race and ethnicity, age, socioeconomic status, sexual orientation, and religious beliefs. No one is immune. Because anorexia nervosa is an illness that involves both physical and mental health characteristics, it's important to work with your primary care doctor or pediatrician, as well as with a therapist in the treatment. The two treatments with the strongest evidence base for anorexia nervosa are family-based treatment for adolescents and young adults who are living with parents and cognitive behavioral therapy for individuals or adults. Anorexia nervosa is not a life sentence. Importantly, you can recover from this. One of the most important ingredients, I think, is hope. Someone in the room needs to have it. You, yourself, your family members, or your clinician. You need to hold out hope for recovery and do what you can to engage in treatment. I'm gonna leave you with a quote from one of my own patients, a young woman who had been ill for quite a long time before she recovered from her anorexia nervosa. My life just became more full and there wasn't room on my plate for the eating disorder anymore. So my advice is to hold hope. Hold out hope for recovery and fight for recovery because things really do get better on the other side. Thanks for joining me today. I'm Dr. Cameron Eddy, and at Mass General Brigham, we're here for you.